Hello my bunnies and bats and welcome back to my channel. I'm here at PantheaCon this year, obviously because I've been vlogging and y'all been seeing that, but I'm here with Aaron Rose Connor. Aaron Rose Connor? Connor. 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 Aaron like? Rose Connor. And we're going to be talking a bit about jewelry today and some other stuff, I guess? Music yeah. and all that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what's, what's your take on jewelry? What, what, what do you have to say on that? Well, you know, is it a philosophy? Is it a religion? Is it a spirituality? It can be all three of those, or one of them, whatever works for you. I know atheist druids. I know Christian druids. I know heathen druids. Uh, basically, I guess it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. It goes well with anything. But really, it's more a way of thinking of the world. It's more of a way to be connected to it. It's different everywhere. Uh, I, I studied. With, I'm studying with Ovad. I'm in, in their middle grade right now. They have uh, three grades: Bard, Ovate, and Druid. And what does Ovad stand for? Ovad stands for the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. It's uh, it's out of Sussex, England. Um, it's one of the larger Druid orders in the world. They've got a correspondence course. And gee, there's just no Druids around where I live. So. Same I had here. to go all the way to a correspondence course from another country in order to meet others of my kind. Mm -hmm. uh, but the information is really amazing. Unfortunately, it's based on the English biome. Well, unfortunately, fortunately, it forces me to go out into mine and find out what works. Uh, they call it Druidry of Place. Yeah. So you're in the Obey grade? I'm in the Obey grade right now. Yeah. And I'm nearing the end of my Bardic grade, is what I'm coming towards the end of. I'm in the first 43 or something like that. So I'm coming, I'm co uh, it's taken me like two years. September 2016 is when I, is when I started, so. <laughs> then you're speedy. Uh, yeah, some people take a long time. I'm, I'm one of those people, uh, this is actually to do with a pledge that I took during the reclaiming ritual last night, or yeah, yesterday. Uh, was I need to stop like I need to stop saying I've already done this and I know this and approach things with new eyes and learn things because every time I revisit doing like oh I'm like element of fire right now I'm just like I already know this uh, but I have to like I have to be more humble and like revisit those things learn them again are you my the long separated twin or something. No, I started in reclaiming. I took all their core courses. I took a year long priestess journey with them. And exactly, uh, they do incredible magical training. Uh, they teach me how to do a lot of things on the fly. Uh, rituals. Are, here, we're going to parcel out all the roles right now, everybody. And what's our intent? What are we going to use as ritual tech? And go. And it works. Uh, so I got into the Obod stuff. And I, yeah, I've done this. Why am I doing it? And then it's like, no. Do it again. Do it their way. Uh, get another dimension to your understanding of these things. And and then go on. It really makes the, the concept of each of those things more three-dimensional, I find. Like, you're getting more perspectives on it. Well, it's because, like, when I have my religious studies degree, I'm always see every professor has a different way of approaching every different religion. So it's like... Because it's more th more three dimensional. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a toolbox. Yeah. And they give you a whole bunch of tools. They have you try them out, and which ones work with you, which ones you're gonna stick with, and which ones don't. Yeah. And we've got, like I said, a completely different biome here. We have different trees. Okay, they've got these. Their hazels are huge over there. Ours are little bushes in the understory. Um, yews. They have yews that are thousands of years old. Yeah. We've got redwoods. It's what stands in that place. And even the same, even the same types of tree, like where they have oaks and we have oaks, like here in North America, their oaks are very different. I've never been to England, but a friend of mine has said that the oaks are like, the leaves are like thick and like weirdly rubbery. It's like, well, you know, it's the same tree, but it's, it's not the same tree. I, it was funny. Um, I did I did a year-long brewing of the omelet and with, with the Anglesey Druid Order because, okay, I went over there, I went to camp with Dave the Bard, oh, it was amazing, and I met Christopher Hughes, and 
Christopher. which I might be interviewing Christopher as well, so you yeah. get to it. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to see him again and get some interview. But he said he's interested, so yeah, he, he's amazing. Um, mm. I went to this camp. It was an experiential druid camp, the fourth branch of the Mabinogi, and I oh I know that story. No, I knew the words. I knew the sequence of events. I didn't know the story. Christopher Hughes is a native Welsh speaker, mm. and I hated Woody. Um, I'm sorry, you made a woman out of flowers. Uh, first off, you embarrassed your sister, you stole her child, then you wanted her to do all of these motherly things for this kid, and then when she wouldn't give him a wife, um, you made a woman out of flowers, uh, and, and sold her, and then gave her to him. What? Uh, you know, me too, ne what? Uh, yeah, no. It's not like that. Uh, he has a much deeper understanding of these stories, and um, and now I do too. And I see, okay, yeah, they were all doing dumb things. Mm -hmm. Everybody was just doing whatever they thought they wanted to do, including her. And yeah, I ended up writing a song about her because of I didn't think it was fair. <laughs> yeah. So how do you how did you get involved with Obad and all that sort of thing? Where can people go if they're interested in learning more about it? Uh, you go to druidry.org. They've got a correspondence course. Like I said, it's really high quality. Um, there uh, is also there. There are lists of seed groups and groves. Basically, they have uh, two different kinds of groups. If you have uh, anybody can form a seed group to study together and to you know to do ovid rituals together. If you you got to have two druids to make it a grove, and well you know. There aren't very many in California, it was really hard to find them. And basically I couldn't find anybody around, so I just started taking the course. And one thing led to another, and I met up with people. You know, there, there are a few groups around here, but they're mostly closed. And, you know, it's just a different kind of practice. But go to druidry.org and you can find out. Yeah. So what's your kind of favorite part of druidry? Oh, boy, do I have to... Uh, right, right now I am just all about going into the forest and camping and doing deep you know, meditation and, and work with the trees. In the Bardic grade, of course, I was seriously into my music, and it, well, it's always going to be music for me because I I'm started out as a traditional singer and busker, and I just that's kind of what led me into druidry was doing that stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you think that druidry is good for people who especially like? different types of people, like some people live in the country, some people live in the middle of the city. Do you think it's good for even people that live in the middle of the city that don't have the access to the direct nature? Oh yeah. No, I, I live in the middle of the city. I live in the middle of Oakland. Um, my main tree I work with is on the Laney College campus in the middle of town. Uh, you gotta watch out people. Uh, is she crazy or just peculiar? So, you yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, of course, because look look at your city. Uh, walk around your neighborhood. Where are, where are the trees in your neighborhood? What is the wildlife in your neighborhood? Um, there are flowers growing through the cracks in the sidewalk. Yeah. Go out and introduce yourself and talk back and forth to them, and yeah, they'll think you're peculiar, too. Say hi to the birds. <laughs> uh, definitely. Yeah, that's, uh, I started going for witches' walks, which are described in the 12 Wild Swans with the Reclaiming, which I'm yes. definitely finding a lot of, like, a lot of overlap with the Druidry stuff, with going outside with the witches' walks, kind of dropping open, go check out your neighborhood stuff. And I found that especially able to, like, help me to get more into nature, especially where I do, I also live in a city, but in Canada, our cities are more like, there's like a forest in the middle of our city, basically. So, like, there's a lot of trees everywhere. But that's how I, going out and looking for that nature and just experiencing what nature there is, that's how I found out that there is, every year, there is the pigeons go back to lay their eggs in the nest of, a, of an awning on the bookstore. There's a bookstore awning, and every year there's a pigeon laying eggs in that awning. And like, you go back and you're just like, hello, pigeons, hello. Yeah, you get your season <laughs> that way. You know when it's gonna happen. I work yeah. in the middle of San Francisco in Fisherman's Wharf in, in a real liminal area. And yeah, there are birds all over the place. I see night herons all the time, the seagulls. And seag seagulls and pigeons, I mean, come on, just because they're very plentiful doesn't mean you can't learn about them. Mm. Yeah, and that's a good point on seasons as well because some places, like a lot of parts of California, don't have 
like the four seasons. But if you go out and look, you can see how your seasons work. For example, like a lot of the Celtic writings, it's always like, oh, February is when daffodils are happening. And right now, it's the middle of February. I just came from like a negative 10 degrees Celsius in Canada, and we considered that a nice mild day. And I just like, I hurt my coccyx by like slipping and falling on ice, like trying to get to work one day. Like, I am like, what do you mean that this is spring? What do you mean in bulk is when like spring starts to sort of happen? Until I started recognizing the life and it's actually like the, there's like a slight defaw every day, but it's still cold. But like the trees are kind of starting to defaw a little bit and then hold back and they're cold again. They kind of come back a little bit and they hold back again. So it's like, it's more slush. That's our version of Imbolc, it's slush, slush month. <laughs> Instead of first sprouts, it's slush. <laughs> yeah, well you're slush so time. You're farther north, aren't you? Very. We're, uh, I'm from New Brunswick in Canada, so that's like slightly east of Maine. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, so it is. And you don't have the Gulf Stream up there, which is, I think Britain is kind of close to your same latitude. But they've Sim got similar. the Gulf, yeah, but they've got the Gulf Stream and you don't. Yeah, we, I, I'm from also a river valley, which is like cold. It's a, it's a damp cold all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best, but we go from extremes. So like I can very clearly see the season. So like starting to work with the season for me was very easy to start with because it was like, well, I can clearly see them. But I find a lot of people have like, that I've read have had difficulties getting in tune with nature and the seasons when they're from places like this where it's always sunny or like places like much, much further up north. It's not always sunny. Well, yeah. We have, we have two seasons. We have a wet season and a dry season. Yeah. Well, we're not getting as much wet season anymore because, well, guess what? We decided to strip the planet bald and the trees aren't here to regulate our weathers anymore and I'm just kind of watching. Am I seeing the beginnings of desertification? I, I think I might be. And it's yeah. really sad, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, we need to we need to work on our stuff. We need to take responsibility for what we've done. Decide, not not guilt, responsibility. Then we have to work with the planet, sit down, listen to the planet, ask her what she wants us to do, and then find out what the new normal is a uh, hundred years from now or so. Yeah, it's a lot to figure out right now, but hey. Not our job. It took us a long time to make this mess. It's going to take us a long time to fix it. And we need to be slow and not rush into things and decide we know things. Because we, if we know, we wouldn't have made this mess. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, what else is new? I mean, that was probably me the other day. Yeah. So we we'll landed in. Oh, wait. So it's gone and you landed in the sandwich. Oh, that's what, that's what editing's for. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, seriously, because that's that's the thing. We're, we're, everybody says California has no seasons. Yeah, well, but that's the thing is, is there are seasons. So like that's you have to figure those out. But sometimes they might not be visible on the surface of to, to like a lot of people. It's like well, they think of seasons of oh, winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter has snow. Summer has hot, fall has leaves, and spring has rain, and it's like, okay, well, if that's not what seasons look like everywhere, so. This is not normal. It's in the mid to high 60s right now, in February. Fair enough. There's no rain. It's been 24 days. We have six months of rain and six months of, of sunshine and nothing in between, but no, we're getting down to like a couple of months, a month. Right? Lucky? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. It's well it's different. It's, it's different. different. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Well we'll figure out what we're gonna do. Maybe our climate the climate zones will move on. Who knows? Yeah. We'll have to see what happens. Pretty much. Yeah. So you have your drum out here. I have wanna, drum. wanna tell us a bit about your drum? Yeah. Okay. This is an Irish drum. This is called Boron. Um, round, covered with goat skin, very high right now because it's a natural skin, which means that the, the, it's very affected by temperature and moisture, and it's also a brand new skin. I just reheaded this drum a few months ago, and I'm, it's still settling in. Yeah. 
but anyhow, um, yeah, I started out at Renaissance Fair. I learned a lot of traditional songs, and um, I used to busk out on the streets. Mm. I was, I, I sold cassette tapes, that's how old I am. I uh, called it Bard in a Box, <laughs> you know, and people would, people would buy them. And then after, after a while, I got to writing my own songs, and then I started doing Druidry and Ruthie Owen, and all of a sudden, she songs coming out of my ears. This is great. For those of us uh, out there that don't know what Alwyn is, can you do a little brief? What What is Alwyn? Oh, well, okay, that will tell you what song I'm going to play, too. I'm going to, yeah, Alwyn is the flowing, the flow of inspiration. Uh, you know, inspiration, breathe in, okay, some, some traditions have, you know, inspiration on the breath and it's air. Uh, the Welsh concept is more a flow, like, uh, like, almost like water. Um, and it's it's something that you tap into. It's something that comes through you. Uh, I don't really have similar concepts. You know, I mean, people talk about the muse, and you know, that's another way of saying the same thing. Um, the Awen is something that carried wind brewed. Uh, if you if you look at Welsh mythology, uh, there's a there's a tale, the tale of carried wind Italius, and, and um, it's how. Caridwyn had an ugly son, and she wanted to give him something because her daughter was so beautiful, and she wanted him to be remembered for something. So she went up and learned how to, to make this brew and brew it in a cauldron to, to brew actually the the, the, the the inspiration. And she did this for a year, and it ended up hitting the wrong guy. Basically, what happened? She brew this stuff. Uh, the cauldron blows up, there's three drops. You, you get hit with the three drops of inspiration, the rest of it is pure poison. Um, and yeah, it's a good myth to look up. I'm going to sing you a song now. It's called, um, basically it's called I Was. Uh, it's, it's about the Awa. This is actually, uh, there's a poem called the Cat Gato, the Battle of the Trees. And uh, Christopher Hughes, we're always back to Christopher Hughes, wrote a book called Celtic Magic, and he has translated this poem and suggested that you do a meditation and, um, you know, do some artwork around it. And there's 12 different changes, so this, is, uh, this song has 12 verses. However, that's way too much for the modern meat hall, so I've cut it way in half. Uh, and this is called This Was. Ah, when I sing from the deep, I bring it. I know how it ebbs and it flows. Everything swims in this unseen current. How life its own story knows. Falling through the air is a droplet of water. Song of the falls in the morning cool. Rainbow of sound and fracturing of sunlight. I'm swallowed by the Ah, when I sing from the deep, I bring it. I know how it ebbs and it flows. Everything swims in this unseen current. How life its own story knows. I was a path that led underneath the trees into the forest of mystery. Will you see wonders or will you be broken if you choose to follow? A coracle floating on the sea, one with the arm, one within my form. Carry the child across the flowing water to the fish we're to be born. Ah, oh, when I sing from the deep, I bring it. I know how it ebbs and it flows. Everything swims in this unseen current. How life its own story knows. I was the shining taste of effervescence, making my way to the light and air. Life may be short, but how we choose to live it is the moment that we share. Ah, when I sing from the deep, 
goodbye, bring it. I know how it ebbs and it flows. Everything swims in this unseen current. How life its own story knows. And at last I was a raindrop in a shower, falling to land in the boundless sea. One with the source, everything and nothing. Is it ocean or is it me? Oh, when I sing from the deep, I bring it. I know how it ebbs and it flows. Everything swims in this unseen current. How life its own story knows. How life its own story knows. But yeah, so thank you so much for that song and for talking to us about some druidry and stuff. So. If anybody's interested, again, druidry.org if you're interested in the order of bards, obeys, and druids at all. Is there any way that they can get in contact with you if they're ever interested? Like yes, any, yeah. I have, I've, I've got a website, erinroseconnor.com, and uh, I'll, it'll hook you to my SoundCloud and my blog and just every other little thing. Cool, and I'll leave that down in the description below so that you can find that easily and just click on over. But thank you guys so much for watching today, Buddies yeah. and Bats. Please hit that subscribe button because I try to make as many videos as I possibly can through having a full-time job and, uh, you know, going off to California randomly because I was left for five minutes with my own credit card. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. I love you, love you, love you lots. Bye. Bye.